Hello, good evening, my name is Pete, aka Housebone from Housebones World, and welcome to the channel. This evening I'd like to talk about frame rate limiters. And if you are new to the channel, please go and check some of my previous videos because this directly relates to me purchasing last year the LG OLED C9 TV, probably the best gaming TV currently on the market. Now, the LG C9 OLED TV was the first uh, consumer TV to get G-Sync certification. The TVs don't have a G-Sync module in them, but they have been G-Sync certified, so the meaning that if you have the latest NVIDIA drivers and the latest LG firmware on your TV, working in conjunction and setting them up, as I've shown in one of my previous videos, you get a G-Sync certified display. Now, in some of my previous videos, comments, I did get a lot of people asking, how are you gonna limit your frame rate? Are you gonna use RTSS? So being fresh to all this, at the time I was really thinking, why on earth would I want to limit my frame rate? It seems these days that frame rate is king and we've got a lot of high refresh rate monitors on the market. Now the LG C9 is capable of 4K at 120 Hz, but as I've said in previous videos and we've covered over this, it's only capable with an HDMI 2.1 GPU, which as of yet have not come to market. If you are in the market for a graphics card, do not buy at the minute hold out as long as you can it may be near the end of this year uh, second half or the end quarter of the year but there is a big graphics card battle coming AMD are going to shake the market up with their enthusiast card and I'm sure Nvidia is going to throw something in the mix to equal or knock them out of the system and I do believe they will be HDMI 2.1 cards if they're not they're missing a big, big trick. But anyway, back to this video. Anyway, as I just mentioned, if you're running your TV at 4K, you have a frame rate window of 40 to 60 FPS. But these days, frame rate is king, and we have a lot of high refresh rate uh, monitors on the market. Now currently, because we've only got HDMI 2B port cards, you can only run 120 hertz at 1080p or 1440p. Now, if you were using those resolutions, that frame rate window opens massively and it's from 40 to 120 frames per second. So going all the way back to my previous comments, why do we need a frame rate limiter? Well, to keep the G-Sync goodness running exactly as it should, we don't want to go above the maximum frame rate because that can produce tearing. Obviously, if more frames are delivered than can be rendered, the screen can't catch up and you're gonna get tearing. Now, the fact that I've got an RTX 2080 Ti in my machine and it is overclocked to its maximum potential, it has a lot of horsepower. And yes, it can push more than 4K60 in games. So it's important to keep the frame rate within the window of the G-Sync. But this is where it does become a bit of a minefield because doing some further research, it does seem that Nvidia have changed and moved the goalpost and have introduced ultra low latency modes and are now recommending that Perhaps, depending on your monitor or your mileage, running G-Sync with V-Sync and ultra low latency modes. All three can be run together and all three will help with smooth frame rates and tearing. Now, for reference material, I have referred to a brilliant website called Blurbusters and they do an NVIDIA 101blurbusters.com G-Sync guide and I really honestly encourage you to go through and read 
every page of this and get towards the end and this will give you a very good insight to their recommendations and for the people who it's RTFM too much to read their optimal G-Sync settings are to enable G-Sync put vertical sync on and they give you the reasons for doing that in in-game settings use exclusive full screen mode but disable all vertical sync, v-sync, double buffer and triple buffer options and if there is an in-game frame limiter to use that only because an in-game frame limiter gives you the lowest latency settings but should there not be an in-game frame limiter you could use RTSS or the NVIDIA max frame rate settings which I will just cover over in a minute. It also mentions the low latency mode settings and I honestly think that is worth turning on. And they do recommend running all three in conjunction. So on screen we've got what I think are the two best choices that you could possibly have to limit the frame rates on your PC. Which of these do you choose is down to your mileage but I personally have got one preference over the other and I will quickly cover over that. So on the left hand side of the screen we have Reva Tuna Statistics Server. Now this can be downloaded with MSI Afterburner and it actually comp packages complement each other and can be used in conjunction with each other. On the right hand side we have the NVIDIA Drivers Control Panel and of the latest release of drivers NVIDIA have added the option to set a maximum frame rate. Now if you wanted to use the RTSS it's very very simple to set up and use and where you've got frame rate <laughs> and where you've got frame rate limits I've set that to 57. Now if we come over to the NVIDIA control panel, add it in, if we just move slightly down, just below where the low latency mode is, which I have set to ultra, you have the option to set a maximum frame rate. And I have set that at 57. But I'm gonna turn that back off and I'm gonna come and explain why. Now, when when you're using something at a driver level it's possibly the best option but the reason I'm not going to be using that and I would be using RTSS and the reason is that when my PC loads up RTSS is enabled and if I want to disable it I click the box to turn it off and it's not running. Now if you go into the NVIDIA control panel and you set up your frame rate limit, that is a global setting. And once it is set, it will apply that frame rate limit to all applications. Now the trouble with global settings is, it's something that you can set, it's a fire and forget, you close it down and you don't think about it. Now that's great until you come to use something where you don't want to limit the frame rate to 60 frames per second. For example, if you change your resolution to 1440p at 120Hz, you've then got to remember that you've got to go back into the NVIDIA control panel and change the settings. Now for some of you, you're going to be saying, well, yeah, you can just change the settings. But sometimes you change things and you leave it and you forget and you come to do something else and you'll spend a good 10 to 20 minutes piss arsing about trying to work out why the frame rate is set to a certain limit or level and then you'll remember and think, ah, oh, I'm an idiot, I set it in the global settings. Now what you can do, you can create profiles in both sets of software but once again, if you do it and you forget, it can be frustrating, troubleshooting back. My recommendation is, is to purely use RTSS 
It loads up when the machine starts up. That's the setting I've set up. If I want to use the frame rate limiter, I can set it and I can see what setting it's at. If I don't want to use it, I close the application. I'm not limiting frame rate. If I want to change the frame rate it's at, I very quickly type it in. I don't actually have to load anything up and change any settings. That is my recommendation. Now obviously this is quite a controversial subject and a lot of people are going to have a lot of different opinions. Obviously I'm applying this to the LG OLED C9 TV. But I'd love to hear in the comments below what systems you've got, what monitors you've got and what settings you are running. Are you running the G-Sync? Are you running V-Sync with that? Are you running ultra low latency mode? What's your preference? Are you using RTSS? Are you using only NVIDIA drivers? What works best for you? I'd really be interested to hear your thoughts on it. And I, for myself, as I've mentioned, I'm gonna stick with RTSS because it's just accessible, it's easy, and I can quickly change on the fly and remember what frame rate limits and settings I've got set up without having to go all the way into the NVIDIA control panel. Anyway, this has been a short but brief video and I'll see you pretty soon in more videos to come. Thank you for watching and peace out.